Hey guys, Brendo Inner Productions here, and welcome to the fourth Vim tutorial. Now, in the previous three tutorials, we're actually using how to, learning how to use Vim fairly well. Um, we're able to navigate files with, with pretty good ease, and we can actually do some basic line manipulation. However, we're about to get even more advanced. So let's go ahead and open our test text file by right-clicking on the file and pressing Edit with Vim. We're going to once again move Vim to the center of the screen and increase its height, and let's continue working on this document. So. In the previous tutorials, we've learned how to install Vim, we've learned about insertion modes, we've learned about um, navigation, and now what we want to learn about is Vim's change modes. So, we now know that in order to, for example, um, delete this word line, or change the word line, for example, um, we can go ahead and press capital, or, yeah, capital A to get to the end of the line, backspace what we don't want, and then insert what we actually want. Um, however, there's functionality for this in Vim. Um, there's functionality for changing things, and these are the change and replace commands. So, let's go ahead and cover those straight away. So let's go ahead and start with the replace commands. I know that might frustrate some of you with strange placement uh, problems, because I said it in order of replace and change, or change and replace, and then I... Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and start with the replacement commands. So, say that we actually want to change this word limes to times, as in New York Times. Um, in order to do this, we want to put our cursor on the L here, because that is the one letter that we want to change. And then we can go ahead and use the replace character command. And all of this does is it replaces a single character. Now, in order to do this, all we have to do is type lowercase r. So we type lowercase r, and then the cursor changes into this strange underscore cursor, uh, where we can go ahead and actually replace things. So now that we're in replace mode, we just type in T, and it replaces whatever is at our current cursor with whatever we type. So similarly, if we just wanted to change this random letter after, we wanted to change it to after, we can press replace, lowercase r, and then type in p to change it to after. This is the single character replace. It's very useful when you have spaces, which are also characters, and you want to replace them with dashes or something of that sort. So we can type in r for replacement, and then change the space to a dash. And we can do the same thing with all of these spaces. And as you can see, that simple replacement uh, did not take much time with Vim's navigation and replacement commands. Now, as you learned in the last tutorial, there are lowercase and uppercase alternatives for every command. So what does uppercase R do? Well, lowercase R replaces a single character. Uppercase R just replaces until you want to stop. So, for example, let's just say we want to replace everything from this dash onward. So we can go ahead and type in capital R, and then it changes to replace mode, and then we can go ahead and keep on typing. So we're just going to say, is a taco. So space is a taco. And it looks actually really cool when you're typing it, but all you're doing is you're replacing the current letters with whatever you're typing in. And if what you're replacing it with is not long enough, you can see that you get funky sentences like, this is a taco line, which sounds like some strange new dance form that's going to replace the conga line when the conga line just becomes too mainstream. Talkor line. Anyway, so continuing with this replacement mode, if we just go to this letter of something, type capital R, we go into replacement mode, and then we can go ahead and just ramble on, and we just replace whatever's there with whatever we're typing. Press escape to get back into command mode. So just a quick reminder, lowercase r changes one single character, Um, yes. And capital R changes everything. And it's probably not that good to see. Um, however, if I just kept typing capital T's, you can see it just replacing everything with these capital T's. Okay, we're pressing escape to get back to command mode. And so those are the replacement modes. However, there's also change modes. And change modes are a little more complicated. Because change modes also involve a a object modifier, if you will. So, um, in Vim, uh, you can you can use H, J, K, and L to move over single characters at a time. As you could probably see, if you were to type K at any point, you would move one character up. J at any point moves one character down. L at any point moves one character right, and H at any point moves one character left. However, what if you wanted to move entire sections at once? Um, you wanted to move every entire paragraphs or, or or entire words, what have you. Well, there's modifiers for this. For example, um, if we're at this, we can actually press the W, uh, standing for word, 
And as we type W, our cursor actually jumps from word to word. Pretty cool, right? Now if we were to type capital W, the same thing happens, except with lowercase w, a word is delineated by punctuation, and in uppercase w, a word is delineated by space. So, for example, if we, whoops, if we replace this space with a period, this dot is would be a single word if we were typing with capital W. So we could type in lowercase w, and you can see this dot is, that's actually three words, this is a word, dot is a word, and is is a word. And if we type with capital W, this is, and this dot is, is an entire word. So this is extremely useful when you're trying to move through, for example, parameters in programming, where you have parentheses and you want to move through, or you have commas and you just want to skip the comma and move to the next word. So it's this sort of thing. And then um, there's also an alternative one where, as you can see, W will actually move to the next word. Um, e, lowercase e, actually moves to the end of the word, E standing for end, and capital E uh, moves to the end of the word with the punctuation thing, just like the W command. So when combined, these W and E commands can actually be fairly powerful, because if we want to move to example, or for example, to the end of this dot is, previously we would hold down L. However, now we can type in www capital W, or rather, www capital E. And now we can type in A and append right to this dot is. Pretty handy, right? So where do all of these modifiers actually come in with the change modifier? Well, you have to specify what you want to change. So the way it works is it's kind of like you want to change up to a certain point. So say we have talk or line here. And what we want to do is we want to change up to the end of line dot. Well, we all know that to get to the end of, well, we now know, to get to the end of line dot, we would need to type in capital W, which actually works so well that it just gives us to the next line. So that's not a good example at all. So let's go ahead and work with this example. Um, so if we wanted to get to the end of this dot, is then we would want to type W here and then capital W here to get to the end of that. Well, say we just wanted to change up until that point. So in order to do that, we would start up at indeed, press W to get to this next line, and then we use the change capital W modifier. So change is C, uh, stands for change. And then we want to change up until the end of that. So to get to the end of that, well, we could type in capital W, which would get us to the next word, or we can type in capital E, which would get us to the end of this string. So let's actually go ahead and type capital E. And as we do that, you can see that it deletes that entire string that we just wanted to delete, and since we typed in the change modifier, it deletes it, and then it puts us into insertion mode. Um, so we can go ahead and just change that. So um, the change modifier is something that can just be used um, in conjunction with other modifiers. Now, say you wanted to, you can also conjoin. Sorry, you can also join the change modifier with the basic navigation commands. So, for example, if you wanted to change this T up to the next character to the right, you use the change modifier, and then you type in L, and that's saying use the change from the beginning of the T to the next character to the right, which is the end of the T, and then you can go ahead and change that and you can just keep on changing for as long as you want. If you wanted to change, um, for example, the space before the T, you could press change C for the change modifier and then type H and you would be changing the space to the left of T um, and you could just change that. Same thing with lines, you could type in change J and it would go ahead and delete, delete the entire line um, because we're changing we're changing up until the lower line. So it's fun to just play around with these kind of things and actually figure out what they do. Now I mentioned that every command has a lowercase and capital alternative. So what does capital C do? I'm actually not really sure. Um, from what I'm seeing, capital C is very similar to capital R where it replaces or it changes to the end of a line. So if we just take in the middle of this T T T T T T string here and we type in capital C, it will change until the end of that line and then we can replace it with what we, what we want. Whew, isn't that just isn't that just a mouthful? So let's go ahead and add all of this in. So we're going to go ahead and type in O to open a new line and we're going to go ahead and type in these four new commands. 
um, actually a few more commands. So we have W here, which navigates navigates cursor to next word. We have capital W, which navigates uh, cursor to next word, not worrying about symbols. We have um, E, which navigates to the end of the um, to the to the next end of a word. So if you're at the end of one word and you press E, it's going to navigate to the end of the next word. And capital E does the same thing and navigates to the next end of a word, not worrying about symbols. And then we have the replace and change command. So we have R, which replaces a single character. Capital R, which replaces until we tell it to stop. And we tell it to stop using the escape command to switch into command mode. Um, then we have C, which changes uh, whatever we specify using a modifier. So the modifiers would be um, you want to change to the next word, you want to change to the next slot to the right, change to the next slot to the left, using all of the tools that we already know. So through this change command, we know that in Vim, we can kind of combine commands in order to create bigger functionality. And that's one of the big pros of Vim. Um, the One of the things that sets it apart from all the modern text editors, at least, is you have all of these commands that you can just use your imagination to combine and create new commands. Then we have capital C, which uh, changes until the end of a line. And I think that that's all we've covered in this tutorial. A lot. And it's a lot to practice with. But hey, practice makes perfect. And as long as you keep practicing this stuff, you'll become good. And I know it's pretty discouraging going through these tutorials and just seeing all of this information thrown at you. However, as long as you get this stuff down, I can assure you that in the long run, it will be worth it. Because I have actually stopped using programs like Microsoft Word um, and, uh, well, Microsoft Word, essentially. <laughs> because when I'm typing in my, my essays or my documents for school or what have you, um, I often find myself trying to move, trying to navigate through the document using HJKNL because I don't want to, I don't want to take the time to reach over and grab the mouse. So that causes problems, obviously, because that doesn't work in Microsoft Word and it actually just inserts HJKNLs into my document and that's not nice. So this is why I like Vim. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that this information is useful for you. Uh, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and I hope to see you in future videos. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Peace.